it's Ashley from Sweet Dream Steak Shop, and today we're going to make some Earl Grey Citrus Sugar Cookies. This is one cup of salted butter that is in a fairly deep saucepan on the stove. You want to make sure you choose a deep saucepan so that it doesn't bubble up and over onto your stove. It takes several minutes to get it to this consistency. Oh, it's like magic watching that brown amber color come through and that is exactly what you want. Keep swirling the pan. At this point, you should smell a nutty caramel flavor. Pour your butter into a heat proof bowl. Don't be afraid of all those sludgy bits. That is exactly the type of stuff you need for this caramelized flavor. I'm just showing you the color here. It is a little bit dark in this light. It's probably slightly lighter in person. And you're going to stick that in the freezer. The butter has been sitting in the freezer for about 20 minutes or so. You could probably go less because you do want the butter to be a little bit soft still. As you can see, it's gotten to an opaque color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this into my KitchenAid bowl. And I have fitted my KitchenAid with a paddle attachment. Whenever you're measuring ingredients, if you are still kind of learning how to bake, you wanna make sure that you fill up your cup and you kind of go back a little bit so that you make sure it's level and then you level it off. So you can get that nice tap. This is one and a half cups. Different. And now I'm going to turn on the mixer and I'm going to mix that until it gets to a really nice creamy consistency. So this is the um, type of texture that you're looking for right at this point. Still a little bit grainy in spots, but oh, you can see all those little blackish brownish bits. That is all the flavor there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my eggs and we're going to be using two eggs. When you're cracking your eggs, you want to make sure that you're doing it on a flat surface, not on the edge of anything. Because as soon as you put it on the edge, then the bits of the egg go right into your um, right into your egg, and that's no good. So at this point, because we're making um, a special flavor of sugar cookies today, if you just wanted to make the classic type of uh, sugar cookies, then you would um, put you would stop here and you would just keep going to the next step. I'm going to add my flavoring in. Some people like to add a little bit of almond extract as well to the original one so that it tastes more, almost like a shortbread. Um, my husband really, really hates the flavor of almond extract. So I actually just mixed it right out of my recipes. Um, about a teaspoon of uh, vanilla. If you're not using pure vanilla extract, I would, ex uh, I would say that you probably need to use about a tablespoon of the artificial stuff. And I'm going to just dust the whole thing. The next thing that we need to do in order to finish up this Earl Grey um, orange flavor is you're just honestly going to use a tea bag. I'm going to use two so I get the really good flavor. This is Earl Grey tea from Twinnings Classic. Is it Twinnings or Twinnings? I don't know. <laughs> so. You're going to take one of the tea bags and you're going to um, cut open the top and then pour it in. So I'm going to whip this up now and probably just for about a minute. All right, that's done whipping up. It looks amazing. Look at that, kind of looks like 
Swiss meringue buttercream or something else equally delicious. Uh, and now it's time to add our dry ingredients. And when you're adding the dry ingredients, it's super important you do it little by little at a time um, and don't let your flour burn. Whip this up just until we get everything combined. Um, things still need to bind a little bit more together. I remember the first time I made sugar cookies, which was years and years and years ago. Um, when I first made them, I made the mistake of thinking, oh, my, it's not coming together because I was still doing things by hand. And I was just thinking, man, it's not coming together. It's so dry still. You just have to keep going. When I take this out of the bowl, what I'm doing is you could use a spatula, but I find my spatulas are so weak that they can't get all the dough out. So I kind of use this side of my finger to get things out. Um, and I started this because a lot of us have nails and gross, you don't want all that bacteria. Alright, so what I did just there was I kneaded it to the point where all those dry ingredients were super well incorporated and I'm going to put it into one piece of saran wrap. If you were maybe wanting to split this into two separate batches, what you could do is you could cut it in half, put saran wrap in, uh, put the saran wrap ball into your freezer and freeze it for a really, really, really long time. Honestly, like it's probably not going to go bad for at least a couple months. and make sure that it's fairly sealed now as you can see it's kind of loose here i don't want to waste plastic wrap so what i always do and people think this is really strange but i just i've always done it so i keep doing it you flip it over and you hit it this process also helps with when you're going to go roll out the dough later. You can just bring it out and the work is less. I don't like rolling it between um, the sheets or anything, like on the cookie sheets. I just find it really challenging to do that at this point, so I don't do it. And then I'm going to pop this in the fridge. Make sure you line a cookie sheet with parchment. Here I'm going to put down a generous amount of flour onto our workable surface area and on top of the dough as well. My recipe doesn't have as much flour in it in the beginning so that we can incorporate it at this stage. Here I'm cutting out my cookies and I have a bit of a technique where I use the cookie cutter to lift the cookie. I would like to note that the dough was quite firm when I took it out of the fridge, so we won't need to put these pans back in the fridge. But if your dough is a little bit looser, you're going to want to put it back in the fridge so that your cookies maintain their shape as they bake. Just came out of the oven and they're nice and cooled now. Um, they cool really, really quickly. This is the perfect texture. This is exactly what you want. Nice and flat and on the back, you got that golden edge and it really baked up beautifully. Please follow me tomorrow for my next YouTube video where I'll be showing you how to ice all of these beautiful cookies.